If you watched my uh, EVGA X58 SLI classified video, I mentioned quite a few times about the uh, about my passion to get the uh, last version of all of the X58 classified boards, the X58 classified free. So this is probably just a fine-tuned version of the original X58 SLI classified. That this has onboard USB free as well as SATA free, so six gigabits per second ports. Uh, this has some uh, small fine tunes at the VRM area, and uh, this has better location for the EV box connector. I think that's pretty much just that. And uh, yeah, there's no NF200 controller, so uh, this uh, this will not have any uh, limitations on uh, overclocking the uh, base clock because if you had NF200 chip on the motherboard it would limit the maximum uh, PC Express clock you can achieve and therefore it also limits the maximum uh, base clock you can that, that you can achieve so uh, I thought about making this uh, video with you guys so I got this uh, board with a 6 core Xeon and some uh, DDR3 memory for around like 150 euros on German eBay so uh, that's pretty good deal it looks it, it almost feels like it's like new from the store, it, the original packaging and everything. So I thought about that. I will unbox, unbox it with you, and then we can just look at the boards side by side, see what uh, visible differences there are between the uh, E770 classified free and the E760 SLI classified. So if we just look at the back back side of the board, so quick notes over here. Mm, EVBot support, which the location of the EVBot connector is much better on the classified free. Uh, Ten year warranty if you re register the buffer board. Driver CD, it has the same VRM, but the uh, caps at the VRM area are different, at least a little bit. Mm, I think in most ways it, it should be pretty much the same. They uh, didn't really uh, differ that much, to be honest, but yeah, so... Yeah, looks almost like if it was new from the store, because everything is in place, totally different or totally opposite compared to uh, stuff what I have here, so all the stuff I have here are pretty much all over the place, so uh, look how well the uh, included uh, socket cover has been stored as well. What is this? I think this is some kind of a some adapters. I don't know ID port. I don't know drivers. I wonder if this. I wonder if this uh, original uh, original driver CD has the uh, uh, original uh, Elite overclocking software for the motherboard because it's quite hard to find all that uh, overclocking software nowadays from the internet because all the links are dead. It's very hard to find the uh, versions that you are searching for uh, from uh, forums or similar. So uh, I will check that out. Just your user manual and uh, IO shield. Looks like it has never been used. I don't know. Oh yeah, but looks almost like unused. Freeway SLI bridge. This freeway SLI bridge, but longer a gap between the second and third card. So the length is almost the same as on four way SLI bridge. I think this is your standard SLI of crossfire. I think it, this is an SLI bridge. Uh, some extra USBs and a firewire, uh, a firewire port which you can plug on the motherboard and put at the PCI Express area. Six sticks of, what are these? 1600 Cas9 Riptors, 1.5 volts. Yeah, sadly this did, this did, sadly this did not come with the uh, motherboard back then, back in 2010, but well, I don't have any use for these pretty much, so I can just sell these. But they are nice add-on for the deal that I got. So 
so it doesn't really matter that much. Wait a minute, there's a water block included. I did not expect that. Huh. Well, doesn't matter. So here's the actual motherboard. Looks pretty much the same. It has the tall heatsink for the north bridge. But it seems that the uh, last version has some... Uh, it had some kind of a fan attached to it. But this is uh, this looks to be some kind of an aftermarket one. Probably like some uh, fan from Noctua. So, uh, yeah. So let's look at the motherboards. Let's look at the motherboard in a more closer view. And then just compare the two boards side by side against each other. Now, uh, I really have to say that I am impressed. The motherboard, the motherboard looks pretty much new out of the box. It like shines and everything like if it was not used at all, like ever. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally impressed by the uh, uh, quality of this motherboard, considering that it has been used for many, many years. This was released in uh, quite at the late part of 2010. So now over nine years old, motherboard so uh, it's very old piece of hardware I'm really impressed how well this has been kept so uh, now if we just take a, a very quick overview of the motherboard we can notice that you can easily uh, uh, clarify the uh, last version of the classifier x50 classifier motherboards the e770 from the big three over here so the south bridge uh, so the south bridge heatsink is different from the other models the form factor is the same as the very original one, so this is just a normal uh, like E80X motherboard, I think. Yeah, it's E80X because the ADX hole is over here, so it's just a few centimeters wider than your standard ADX. You can notice the big north bridge heatsink with a Noctua fan attached. I think this is all right, it shouldn't make that much noise. No NF200 chip, as I already said, so you have the option for freeway SLI and uh, at least three-way crossfire. So, uh, if I'm pretty, I'm quite confident to say that if you run three cards, they should be X16, X8, X8, or two cards X16, X16, because X58 chipset uh, supports 32 uh, PCI Express lanes, and back then the PCI Express was controller was still inside the North Bridge, not inside the CPU. It was moved into the CPU with the launch of original Sandy Bridge CPUs in 2011 with the 2600K. And that was also the moment when uh, the when the base clock overclocking kind of uh, ended being that relevant. Because when PC Express was moved into the CPU and linked together with the base clock, that made the uh, big limits on the actual base clock overclocking because with the uh, like the newer CPU generations you cannot you cannot change the PC Express more than like plus and minus 10 percent and that that explains why you could not change the uh, base clock of a Sandy Bridge CPU like a 2600k more than plus and minus 10 megahertz since the original since the launch of original Skylake the uh, the uh, PC Express was again separated from the base clock, so now you have now you have the uh, full base clock overclocking once again, but it's not that relevant anymore because people are now used to just overclock using the multiplier. It's much easier to uh, multiply uh, a value of 100 than to mess around with base clock. So uh, I doubt it will ever return in the way it was with the X58 and 775 platforms. But uh, now, when if we just take now if we just continue with the motherboard, so they with the uh, last version they ac actually uh, included this uh, uh, supplementary uh, power uh, Molex power connector for the uh, PC Express slots to provide some extra power if you had multiple cards installed. Uh, reset and power buttons and CMOS clear button are in the same position. Just one. Uh, removable BIOS chip yet again. Sadly, still uh, no no more than one. CMOS battery, debug LED, front panel connectors. I think this is the uh, port for the uh, uh, overclocking panel that was included with the E761. 
model. And then if we take a look over here, so these are the uh, SATA 3 ports, the red colored ones, SATA 3.0 OES, and also they have removed the one uh, additional uh, SATA port from over here. Still uh, six memory slots, so two slots per channel, PC Express disabled jumpers, EV bot has been moved from here to the rear I.O. And uh, I think nothing else really pretty much. Same uh, voltage measurement points over here. The uh, socket area is a little bit different as I already said, so we can take a look at that. So now on the right on the right hand side you have the you can see the E770, so the classified free, and here on the left is the E760. So the second version of the very original X50 SLI classified. And if you look at the uh, socket areas, you can clearly see the difference. So on the very original one, or all the other ones, com uh, I mean all the other versions of the X50 classified, except the 770, have the uh, have uh, these big solid caps between the uh, uh, chokes and the CPU. And on the 770, we have these. Uh, this row of uh, aluminium polymers instead of those uh, big uh, solid caps. And the same thing goes at this part of the uh, board as well. So uh, I don't know if that, if that has any uh, like extra potential when it comes to overclocking, but it looks like they may, ha may have tried to tweak the uh, power delivery area for the CPU a tiny bit. Bo all versions have this weird uh, choke over here. I don't know if what what this has to do but uh, anyways i will uh, i need to try the uh, e770 on uh, water as well and see how it overclocks the 980x and so on so that i can decide which board i want to take on ln2 with the 980x because i did tell about my uh, possible uh, like negative thought about the classified free because uh, when this was out for the market, Shamino had already left EVGA, so this could have some, uh, the last version could have some serious bugs when it comes to overclocking, it could have some weird issues on LN2, I don't know, but uh, these are just my uh, personal thoughts, they can be uh, uh, to uh, totally false, but I don't know, so it is just my uh, like bad feeling of that what could be with the board, but I have to test that out myself. And when just looking at the rear I.O., you can see uh, it's pretty much the same. It is pretty much the same. Actually, can I put it put this here? I hope it should fit. So the upper one is the E761. So we have PS2 on both USBs. The uh, SPDIF and coaxial audio ports have disappeared from the rear I.O. on the last version and we have EV bot connector, two USB 3s, uh, some extra USB I th think, but there's no eSATA. There's no eSATA on the E770 but we have uh, the firewire still. Two LANs on both and 7.1 audio. So uh, the Rear I/O of the E770 looks a bit more uh, looks a bit more modern than uh, the original SLI classified. But overall, there aren't that many differences. It all matters how well these ports can overclock the CPU and what will happen with the 980X. Because as I already show, uh, as I already told you in the uh, SLI classified video, this is the last l last chance for me to uh, get any of the uh, remaining records on my 980X. To have any chance on SuperPi 1M, 32M, FiFast, I need to be able to get to full pot with all three memory channels running for the best possible uh, efficiency and performance. It's not. It's it's pretty much a no-go with the Rampage 3 uh, Black Edition or Extreme, and same thing for the X58A or C. But I do trust the uh, a Russian guy called Smoke 
when he told me that the EVGA board should be able to go to full pot with all three channels. So let's tr try that out soon. But yeah, so this is the E770. Those are the main differences what I already showed you. So uh, just extra connectivity, maybe some tweaks at the VRM area for the CPU, improved heatsink for the Northridge. So there's some base plate for, or at the, I mean on the heatsink, and uh, some extra power, power potential for the PCI Express slots. Both uh, both have only uh, a single. Uh, Power chip, some different connections at the rear I.O. So that's pretty much it. But most of the components are totally identical. So the main reasons for the uh, launch of this last model are just the uh, extra connecting the options. Because uh, back then, uh, SATA free uh, storage devices like SSD were, up, were hitting the markets. They had to add those extra uh, connectivity options to the uh, to their high-end motherboard models, so that's why they had to uh, make a refresh of the X58SLI classified and bring out the classified free. So yeah, so that's the uh, overall outlook of the uh, uh, X58SLI classified free or the uh, E770 E770 uh, model of the of the X58 classified. So uh, if you like to see this board, if you have any comments or questions or personal experience about these board models then please leave them down below thanks for watching this fairly short overview of the classified free and comparison against the uh, e760 version then like and share this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you on the next one